Corona means crown. The sun has a corona. And this is where the word coronary comes from. The valves lie in a plane of tough fibrous tissue, the skeleton of the heart. You can see here how early anatomists named this the crown. Notice the coronary arteries wrap around this plane. The coronary arteries branch from the root of the aorta just above the aortic valve. Coronary arteries fill when the aortic blood is trying to flow back into the left ventricle during diastole. Coronary arteries fill when the aortic valve shuts, forcing blood into the coronaries. Although all other body's arteries fill during systole, the heart's blood supply is squeezed shut by systolic contraction and only gets blood supply during diastole. It's simple, the pump, the pipes, and the fluid. When we talk about the pipes, we're referring to the arteries, the arterioles, the capillaries, and the veins. When we discuss fluid, we're talking about the blood. And the pump is the heart. Here's the vascular cycle. The left side of the heart pumps blood through the systemic circulation. The right side of the heart pumps blood through the pulmonary circulation. Here we see the vascular cycle. Can you name all of the parts as the blood flows through? So remember, perfusion is the ability to move blood through the capillaries of the organs in a manner that meets their demands. It's the ability to move blood through the capillaries of the organs in a manner that meets their demands. And perfusion requires a balance between the pump, the pipes, and the fluid, again referring to homeostasis. So let's discuss some components of perfusion homeostasis. Let's discuss blood. Blood is the mediator of gas exchange. Oxygen is required for energy utilization. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of energy utilization. The red blood cells are the component of blood that deliver oxygen to and carbon dioxide away from the tissues. The blood also delivers nutrients and carries away waste products. Blood is also the mediator of immunity and inflammation. Here we see some white blood cells or leukocytes. So perfusion is the ability to move blood through the capillaries of the organs in a manner that meets their demands. Hypoxia is inadequate oxygen de delivery to the tissues for whatever reason. And ischemia is the failure to remove carbon dioxide and waste products in addition to failure to deliver oxygenated blood and nutrients to the tissues. Ischemia is reversed with restored perfusion. Infarction is cell death and irreversible. Blood is part of perfusion homeostasis. Volume is blood volume. Hypovolemia is low blood volume. And hypervolemia or fluid overload is excess blood volume. Hemoglobin is a measure of the protein hemoglobin. It's the carrier of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Hemoglobin makes red blood cells red. Hematocrit is the percentage of blood volume that is red blood cells. Oxygen saturation, or SATs, is the percentage of oxygenation, usually about 98% or higher. 
Sats of less than 94% usually indicate a problem. Let's talk about the pipes. Pressure is the force required to move fluid. Pressure is measured in terms of moving fluid against gravity. In this case, we're measuring centimeters of water in this column. So pressure is the force required to move fluid, and in this case, we are measuring in terms of mercury against gravity in the mercury column. We are going to use this pressure gauge to measure the amount of pressure inside this mercury column. So remember, pressure is the force required to move fluid. Resistance is the force opposing the flow of fluid. By resisting the flow of fluid, we raise the pressure of the fluid. Decreasing the diameter of a pipe increases the pressure of fluid flowing through the pipe. Decreasing the diameter of a pipe increases the resistance against fluid flowing through the pipe. So smaller diameter and more resistance result in more pressure. Less resistance results in less pressure. Now we're going to talk about systemic pressures. They include the blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure, the diastolic blood pressure, and the mean arterial pressure. Blood pressure fluctuates between a higher and lower pressure. This can be felt as the pulse. Blood pressure is the combination of the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. The mean arterial pressure is the weighted average of the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. So systemic arterial pressure involves blood pressure, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and mean arterial pressure. We also measure central venous pressure. This is a very low pressure, usually less than 10 millimeters of mercury. The central venous pressure is the same as the right ventricular filling pressure. We are also able to measure the left ventricular filling pressure, although we are not able to directly measure the pulmonary venous pressure. Next. We predict left ventricular filling pressure by measuring pulmonary artery wedge pressure with a Swan-Ganz catheter. But notice here, central venous pressure is much lower than arterial blood pressure because of systemic vascular resistance. If we lose systemic vascular resistance, we have no blood pressure and inadequate perfusion. If systemic vascular resistance is too high, we have high blood pressure but still inadequate perfusion.